uh, has and associates from Broom Community College. Does a lot of work in uh, sort of anime reviews and hot takes. But what he's going to be speaking to us today about is uh, source material and whether it matters. And with that, I'd like you to welcome LC. So I'm logical conclusion of anime reviews. So Geekick put out a video, source material is irrelevant. He graciously takes the time to tell anime fans that believe you can't have an opinion on anime if you haven't read the source material that they're fucking inbreds. However, some anime fans are still unconvinced. So let's examine their counter argument. This post was by Reddit user Clips. It has 103 upvotes, the highest upvoted post that disagrees with Geekick. The point of Western adaptations is because they believe an adaptation will be profitable. The point of an anime adaptation is to advertise. It's an advertisement almost never meant to stand on its own. While it's not an excuse for plot holes, underdeveloped characters and such, it is a legitimate reason that they exist. The vast majority of anime are not made to be great on their own. They are made for the specific purpose of getting you to go and get the full story from the source. Okay, so he's retarded. If I bash my head on the keyboard and then hit post, it would have more value than this bowel movement. The point of Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice was to make cash money, yo. However, did it advertise for Batman and Superman DC Comics? Of course it did. This sucker right here bought six DC Comics around the time of Batman vs Superman. So anime isn't unique that it helps advertise the source material. Now, if it wasn't important for anime to be profitable, that would be unique. But there is no evidence for this. Gabino.com's Aaron Majulik says that 20% of anime makes a profit in their first year of release. Now, I don't think this number is completely fair because, as he points out, some anime gain a reputation over time. But let's roll with 20% of anime are profitable. This isn't a small number. 322 anime were broadcast in 2014. So that means 64 anime in 2014 were profitable. The studio has a huge incentive to be profitable. The directors have a huge incentive for their show to be a hit. If they have a hit show, they will be offered bigger salaries for their next directing gig. Shinjiro Wanami, Tetsuo Araki, and Mamoru Hosoda obviously make much more money than a junior director just started out. This is like basic capitalism, yo. Obviously, there's incentives to make good anime. All right, let's finish reading this post. To put it another way, I'm saying you wouldn't critique a trailer for a movie by saying that there's a bunch of plot holes and loose ends. You're supposed to go watch the movie to get that shit, not the trailer. Most anime adaptations are, when you boil it down, just much more expansive trailers and not meant to be a substitute for the source. Obviously, I'm not some expert on anime or Japan or the anime industry, but this isn't some crazy insight or in-depth analysis. It's just a fact that most anime are adaptations made to push the source through awareness. It's a byproduct of the industry. If you're critiquing an anime for being completely fleshed out, you're probably completely right. You're watching a big-ass commercial. I'm guessing Mamoru Oshii would not feel that complimented if you told him that he made a good trailer for Ghost in Shell manga. That's rather undersells the effort and supreme talent that went into that project. There are plenty of people who admire that movie for its amazing score, its animation, its art, its story, its atmosphere, who have not read the manga. The movie has a 95% rating in Rotten Tomatoes because it is a beloved movie, not because it's an advertisement. Not to mention the countless anime that don't even have have a source material like Cowboy Bebop, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Madoka Magica, the Gundam franchise that this post doesn't attempt to cover. All right, let's take a listen to his last paragraph. Basically, it's like this. I don't know how many people watch recap anime movies, but if you saw someone who only watched recap movies and complained how the pace was too fast and you weren't getting enough time to get used to the stories and characters, you wouldn't tell them, no shit, watch the series. The recap isn't meant to do that. If you're watching the series and think that there's a bunch of loose ends and underdeveloped characters, you should be thinking, no shit, I need to read the source for that. The very existence of recap movies destroy his point. Recap movies are simply a cash grab after a successful animated TV show. Recap movies would not exist unless the animated series they were derived from weren't immensely successful. Clearly, there is a huge incentive to make a show good. Alright, this is Logical Conclusions of Anime Reviews. Like, comment, and subscribe, bros.